Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Before we start our formal meeting, um, we recognise that a number of you would like to make comments to the council. Uh, at this moment in time, we've got a list of four people that will be making presentations. And please, could we start with John Hale? John, thank you. Good evening, Mr Chairman, fellow councillors. Uh, regarding this reference 0717000 for stroke DD. Following your decision on March 2nd to support the original application, a decision which created an enormous atmosphere of criticism from many residents, Sedgemoor District Council Planning Department have received a vast number of objections from agencies and individuals, some of whom we will mention. Mr. John Denby, as the County Council Member, Sedgemoor Conservation Officer, Acts Blue Drainage Board, the National Trust, Somerset Wildlife Trust, Somerset Highways, Somerset Lead Local Flood Authority. Now, this authority has recently written to Sedgemoor on the 29th of June, stating that the current, app, current application has failed to submit details, layout details, and no outfall details has been requested. In addition, Sedgemoor Planning Department received 108 letters from the local people, as well as a petition signed by 107 villagers objecting to the application. This evening, those of you who supported this application, I'm referring to the members of the <coughs> council, have an opportunity to truly represent the village by not supporting this latest application. If you turns are allowed for the government, there is no reason for Brenton Old Parish Council not to join the club. <laughs> <laughs> This latest application contains a response from Property Link on the 21st of June this year, suggesting that over half the residents of Brentnall were in support of their original scheme. Now, this claim is obviously not true. The suggested improved traffic light scheme will not solve the problems at the Brent Street, Fox and Goose Junction. As we pointed out in our previous comments, Traffic lights will create nothing but gridlock at the usual busy times of the day, especially at holiday periods. The flow of traffic will certainly come to a halt. And even if Brent Knoll and Harp Road traffic have a green light, they will be unable to proceed. Should the traffic light scheme go ahead, who will cover the balance should the estimated cost be insufficient? In conclusion, we repeat comments on our letter of March the 24th. Brent Knoll does not want an inappropriate housing development placed outside the parish boundary with the access in a very dangerous position near the end of Brent Street. It would ruin the entry into our village as well as the beautiful views of the Knoll, admired by many as they drive by on the A38 and M5. Brent Knoll is a very good example what countryside offers. Let it remain so. We urge you, the Brentnell Parish Council, to represent the wishes of the villagers and object to this application. It's from myself and my wife. Thank you. Thank you. Well, into the line of den, I suppose I must go, I suppose. Really, I'm in such a privileged company for many, many people around. When I was chairman, I never had many people supporting me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just going to say that I, I've been in touch, there have been revised uh, situation from the original application. I'm not necessarily not going to go into it in detail, but I'll just mention it when it's once in a while that where it's appropriate. Now this, in my opinion, is an opportunity of a lifetime, which we, as a village, cannot turn down. Jesus. <laughs> shall I carry on now, or shall I go home? Oh, <laughs> 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 
Now there's a company around, not very far from them, they come in, put in this application. They are prepared to spend <coughs> almost half a million pounds for our benefit and safety. And I don't think this is to be ignored. Because our local authority, knowing the work involved in creating this, will never even look at it. Right. I've been in touch today, and she's been in touch with me several times, by the lady dealing with it, Mrs. De Freitas. And she's given me all the details. I didn't go along, but there have been some changes. The changes are whether you know it or whether you don't, I can tell you. Uh, it is going to be recommended as a 40 mile an hour limit. That's from south, an approximate distance of about half a mile going towards, um, in a northern direction. Um, at 40 mile limit, uh, and also half road comes into the situation as well. That is now going to be signalised, so uh, side, side, well, pedestrians also, and motorists, to, to, will, will be given the opportunity and not to go out it will be signposted green, obviously, if they wish to, but as far as I know, they will still have to turn left at that particular junction. Now, the price of doing all this is <coughs> towards half a million pounds. That's an awful lot of money. But we could never, our local authorities could never even look at it in those that situation. Right, now what else are we going to talk about? It's mainly about the, the um, traffic lights. It, it, it's mainly about this, sl slowing the, the movement of traffic along there. And also, we, I don't know, I speak to a lot of my friends and they say it's the only safe way to met of, of, of the problem is to have the traffic lights. There you are, I may be the only one in this room if I'm the only one. <laughs> I have seen that is how I feel myself. Thank you, Becky. Thank you. I also would like to comment on the amendment to the planning application 0717 004. Um, as you know, I've spoken several times at these meetings, so I'm not going to go through all the reasons. I think you all are fully aware of that. But basically, I'd just like to say that obviously, fundamentally, nothing has changed much with this application. The developers just had the chance to respond to the many objections that they've received and submit the reports that they failed to, to um, include in their original application. Um, you now have the opportunity to review your decision. You now have the benefit of hindsight. You have seen the many objections from the residents and from the consultees, including the lead local flood authority, the expert internal drainage, I'll go on, <laughs> and, but, and also mainly the, the Sunset Highways, which um, have also rejected it on, on many um, areas. Um, so I'm here just on behalf of myself and many people actually behind me here, just please will you reconsider and reject this application under the P4 policy, which is what you need to consider this application under. And it, that's it. There's no benefit of <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> I think probably the best thing I can do is read the statement that the developer has put forward because I think it answers a lot of the queries that have already been said. The amended drawings and more detailed reports have been submitted to the LPA which have been prepared in response to the consultee comments. Now this is quite normal that when you put a planning application in, the consultees, all of them, have different requirements or want to know further information and these reports have responded to that. And one of the main concerns of County Highways was the costing of it because they wanted us to resurface the road for 100 metres in both directions, not just put topping on it, but resurface it. And they didn't feel that they could do it within the budgets we were saying. We've now gone out to tender and had a proper building tender for doing that, and we have included full signalisation and resurfacing the road to the requirements of county highways. They've not yet responded to the uh, costings that have been sent in. These have taken some considerable time, and this
further information was submitted as soon as we got the costings back from the contractors. Primarily the drawings show realignment of the estate road and minor adjustments to position some of the houses. The house, house types and sizes haven't altered at all. I've seen certain comments about the fact that we're building more expensive houses and bigger houses. They haven't changed. All that's happened is that the road has been realigned and slightly different spaces between them so that it gives a feeling of more space. Um, this provides greater separation and more spacious environment and that relaxed layout. The drawings have also a more detailed landscaping plan to pr and provide a detailed surface water strategy beneath the estate road. But that's been a, an error here because we sent in the calculations and I've actually forwarded over to both the drainage board who didn't object, they just said they wanted further information, and the Somerset um, flood lady, uh, Marie uh, Wood, <coughs> Uh, I've sent her over the drawings, which for some reason obviously didn't get to them, which show all the things that, were, that she felt were missing. They were put in, but perhaps they didn't go through the email. I don't know. The additional information submitted con confirms delivery of all the A38 road improvements. It's not a partial scheme. I've seen that in some of the letters as well. It is all the road improvements. Signalisation from both directions in all ways for pedestrians and traffic. Uh, professional quantity surveyors intended costs for the full signalisation and resurfacing of the road to evidence viability have been submitted. Confirmation that the developer is not offering a financial contribution, uh, but delivery of the road improvements as requested by the Parish Council. Further confirmation has been given in respect of ongoing maintenance of the drainage ditches around the site. In fact, we had a meeting yesterday with the IDB and they're very happy with, with everything that we've been saying to them uh, because the, um, there will be a private management company set up to manage all the common areas and this will include the drainage ditches around the site. To summarise, the developer has submitted a full response to all the highway objections. They have remodelled the estate road, updated the drainage layout, updated the drainage calculations, shown full signalisation of the A38 junction, and included costs associated with these works, which are deliverable and, re and include resurfacing the A38 as required by Somerset County Highways. The revisions and amendments have been submitted to, um, have been submitted and comments, and, hope, and we hope that the comments and concerns of everybody will actually be covered with the new submission. Thank you very much. Thank you. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Can I just say something in addition to what the saying is? I, I should have said that, that the intention is to have three lanes of traffic going north on the A38, two lanes of traffic going south, and the speed limit along there will be 40 miles an hour. <laughs> Can I just say it's um, two lanes going north and one right turn, not three. That's right. Yeah. And two Vision. lanes going into one by the caravan place. So you're coming that's off the traffic that, lights and then you're going to be bottlenecked into one single mm -hmm. lane. Yes. Yes, you agree. Yeah. Yeah. That was not mentioned to me yet. It is. It's going to one lane by the, the mobile the caravan side. Yes, the corner. it goes down to one lane there. And also, there is not provision now for them to come off the motorway with their um, their lorries and things and then do a U turn at the traffic lights because they'll be then <coughs> flying with the signalling that is coming out if you look at the phases on the traffic lights. Uh, there is uh, the fa fa phase A is going straight and back on the road. Phase B, you're able to turn into Hart Road, come out of Hart Road, and go straight up the A38 and turn into Brent Knoll. Uh, but there is no provision to do a U turn like they normally do and come back to the caravan place. If they, the only other option is for them to turn into Brent Street and wait for phase C and then come back out of Brent Street and turn right. Well, I'm sure all these suggestions you've, you've mentioned that are surely all subject to conversation. I think they've had enough conversation. Well, they have, they have reached that stage. Yes, <laughs> they've had so many bites of the cherry now, it's unbelievable. Very quickly, please. Okay.
Um, I just want to draw attention back to the fact that this is, as we all know, a P4 development. Yes. The P4 development means that it is providing a benefit to our parish and to our um, village. Um, I don't think at the moment there is anything whatsoever that has actually proved that the people of Brent Knoll feel that this is a benefit. And we raised this last time. There was, I asked and I gave you the paperwork about running a, a parish poll or referendum. I've heard nothing about that at all, <laughs> other than to be told there wasn't time, which actually isn't true, because there's as much time as we need in terms of they can delay for the developer, they can delay for us, because they have to wait for all the evidence. We've heard from Morris Jackson today that he has a different opinion to the majority of us in this room, and he has a right to that opinion. We're not disputing that, but if I can just quickly read this, please. Having now heard what residents feel about this P4 housing development and the associated traffic lights, we sincerely ask that you reconsider and represent our views by voting against the proposed development amendments. If our parish council still refuses to listen to us and to actually represent our views, I now formally request a parish poll or referendum. I ask that this be undertaken in order to ensure that actual numbers for and against, so I'm not saying that we are all against, I'm saying we have <coughs> got the facts and we need to be sure that when we're speaking, we're actually speaking correctly and that you're acting correctly based on that. So therefore, the, uh, uh, for numbers for and against the proposed traffic lights and P4 development. This is specifically to ascertain the facts regarding the quoted level of support which we feel has to date not been clearly evidenced. There is an absolute need for clarity and transparency in this matter which has so far been lacking. If this parish council fails to undertake an unbiased poll, we will be forced to consider a vote of no confidence, which is actually a very sad state of affairs. We're not <coughs> wanting that at all. What we're wanting is for you to do it properly. That's what we're asking for, and I don't think anybody can ask or be fairer than that. So I ask you to look at your hearts and ask yourselves, before you vote, do you actually feel that you've done that? Do you really know the feeling? Do you really, are you able to stand up and say, yes, I, everybody's going to agree, well not everybody, but the majority are going to agree with me, and I, I put it to you, you can't. And I think you need to do it properly. I'm sorry if that seems rude, but that is the way it is, and that's the way we feel. Yeah, yeah. 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 Lately, there's been a lot of disruption on the M5. I was stuck in it the other day, coming back uh, northbound. I ended up on a mile from the junction in stationary traffic, trying to indicate off of the junction. At the time, I thought there was an accident on the A38. It took quarter of an hour to clear to come on to the down to the slip road to the um, the roundabout, and the fact was the traffic was queued up coming out of Burnham coming out of Highbridge, coming along by the junction, there was no room for anyone, the, the roundabout was completely full with cars slowly going around and no one could pull off the motorway. Once these traffic lights are there, they're grouping the cars that are going to be stopped by the Fox and Goose, a green light, they're all going to filter down to one lane when they come down by the, the caravan home there and then they're going to get stuck coming to the motorway and they're all going to be at once, there is no way that anyone, they're going to be coming round the roundabout and no one will be able to get off the junction M5 and they're going to be backing on every single day, it's going to be a backup to the M5 and there's going to be a massive 
and I left a space in front of me because I was worried that someone was going to hit me up the back and someone came from the second lane and cut in front of me and nearly caused an accident right in front of me. I was absolutely terrified. I couldn't wait to get off the motorway. Yeah, and I, it's I'm going exactly to be... exactly the same. I travel, Thank the, you. I travel on the M5 every day, yeah. twice for my and work. I've had exactly yeah. the same thing. I've been involved in the near I was, I was trying working, to get off the motorway. I was working in North Newton, and the friend said, you must get back by half past four, yeah. otherwise you're going to get a problem. And he was terrified to stop, and he two was behind me in his van. And seven. it was terrifying. And yeah. i tell you what, the that worst... That's happened today. It happened today. A truck broke down the road. The other day it happens to you coming out. It's happening all the time. This junction and, and also, the businesses opposite said if the traffic lights are there, no one pulls into the forecourt of the garage and no one goes into car base to buy cars. When the road is completely stopped, their, their business suffers. And this is going to be red light traffic all the time with the traffic lights. Thank you. Sorry. I'll just make a comment to Shirley. Yes, please. You mentioned the possibility of referendums, mm -hmm. but in my professional experience, you're probably going to get about a 10% reply. It would be a totally useless exercise. You At have, the end of the you day, have, we get 10%. I, I think, Brian, mm -hmm. that's fair comment. I know that. <coughs> you know, when you do questionnaires and things like that, you often get a very low um, response nationally. It's the statistics. But I don't think that's a good reason not to do it. And we have a right to request that. Do, if you're happy to do that. You have to ask the right question, too. Mm. Yes, I yes, of course. <laughs> well, yeah. I did say it had to be done properly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I sat um, at um, a talk from Duncan Harvey that was at the back of the room on, on uh, the housing and um, he said the P4 is for the people to decide and he said at the time that anyone that said they're against it and if enough people in the local area, the PE4 site was a site that if people said, you know, it's a Greenbelt site and the site was so, you know, critical that the traffic lights are there that you would let the P4 site go and the P people would be behind the P4 and the will of the people decide the P4 application if that many people think it is okay to let the... Um, let the site go ahead, and that's got to be the, the matter. The P4 is the thing that's got to be decided on. <coughs> and whereabouts in all of this is affordable housing? It's, it's, not, it's not affordable anymore, they're not getting it all the way. No, I know. It's, it's gone to have these precious traffic lights and
can ask to have a referendum on anything in the parish poll. Parish poll, right? Okay. Um, that would be out with of anything to do with the council other than we would probably have to administer it. It would be organised through Sedgemoor, right. and there would be a, a likely cost to the parish of £3,000. Against the losses? No, I'm just saying yeah. no, that's going to go on our so budget. I understand that, and I think yeah, so, in this but, case, so yeah. be it. What um, is the sufficient number? Well, oh, as far as I'm aware, and I will have to check this actually because the situation hasn't arisen as you would appreciate whilst <coughs> working as well, but I believe uh, it has to be 10 people certainly initially. Show of hands, please. Because you actually haven't heard the council's um, recommendations on the application yet, okay. so okay. until you've heard that. But you at least know that we have a quorum. Right. Now, all Ten we're trying to say is that there is a mechanism which you have a right to do on this or any other aspect going forward. Yeah, I did hand in the Westminster exactly. guidance last time. Yeah. So we know the situation going forward, that's all I'm saying at this stage. And, yeah. and I think I can't have made it clearer than I already have that I'm not saying we necessarily are the majority, but if you don't do that referendum, if you don't have that poll, you know, we believe we are, maybe we're not, and maybe we'll lose dismally, but we would have to accept that, but at least it would be fair and honest, open and transparent. Right, we will be debating as part of our meeting, mm -hmm. and I would ask that you would perhaps respect the meeting not you personally, all of you, uh, and refrain from interjection and interruptions and outbursts that we had last time, please. <coughs> um, we've listened to you with politely and patience, and I hope you would do the same for us. Can I just say that I do need to leave because I have childcare and right. I need to go home and sort it out. Um, but if, if it comes to a point of... of the names of people who are asking for that, please do put my name down as one of the, the people because I, think that, that I, think I, that, I would want to be supported. Yeah, the process would have to be a formal thing, I don't know, the, yeah. through the parish council. Basically, through, basically, through, basically through, you'd, you'd have to leave with me to go back through the, the process to find right. out exactly <laughs> so we, do, we get it right and we do it the right way. Okay. Okay? So you'll have to bear with me on that. But yeah. I will come back to you within a very short space of time. Lovely. Thank okay. you very much. <laughs> <coughs> so, right, we'll start the meeting, uh, fellow councillors. Apologies for absence. We have apologies from uh, Malcolm Boring, who's actually at his grandson's graduation. So, uh, you will accept those apologies. Thank you. And then we have obviously the declaration of funeral resolution of just an interest. Um, to confirm that it's a personal interest for district and county issues, and also a declaration of word predetermination on applications 7, 17, uh, 17, 18, and 19, and 12, 17, 15. Okay. Right, confirmation of the minutes held on the 7th of June 2017. Can I have a proposal to accept those as a true and accurate record? Second, please, all in favour? Bear with me two seconds while I sign more.
Right, on, on our agenda we have um, that Esther and Duncan were going to update us on something from uh, affordable housing, but recognising that perhaps it might be appropriate to bring forward item on the planning application <coughs> 0717 0004. We'll bring that up for discussion next, please, uh, Councillor. Now, I think it's fair to say that we've had some very strong views expressed from members of the village. And equally, we recognise that this is a reapplication by the developer to address some of the uh, previous comments made by interested parties. We also recognise that anything to do with the junction and the A38 and associated roadworks therewith are out with the direct control of this council, they're out with the direct control of Sedgemore and they lie squarely with the County Highway Department and they will take advice, they will advise Sedgemore <coughs> through that process. I think all of us, despite some of your comments earlier, would feel that that junction is a dangerous junction yeah. and potentially there will be a fatality, well not potentially, <coughs> my discussions with the police regarding other issues in the village on speeding and the like, they say to me, there will be a fatality in this village. Mm. When we can't say, all I hope is it won't happen at all, but there will be one, and that's the worry we have. And, and, and I for one, and I shall just say this up front, felt if we have an opportunity to address the safety issues on that junction, and highways department, county highway department would not be able to do it, then, and we have an alternative mechanism, and that's the only reason I would support it. The application has identified or brought forward to Sedgemore, as I said earlier and has been said by uh, Property Link, certain aspects of the concerns initially raised. Um, and in summary, there's a small realignment of the estate road providing a more open field to the development, a landscaping plan more detailed than on the previous application, a detailed water surface strategy beneath the estate road with all common parts and ditches to be maintained by a management company. There is no increase in the density of the development and no increased sizing of individual properties within it. And in respect of the A38, as I, but as I said earlier, that is out with our direct interest or control. They have attempted to provide the county with evidence of to support the or, or to or dis, uh, deflect their initial concerns and objections. That is yet to be considered by county. They are still debating whether that is satisfactory or not. So the issue we are faced with as a as a council tonight is: um, Do we support? the original application and the decision there we made, that we've already made, or recognising the feeling that's been expressed certainly by Shirley and uh, others tonight, that we explore the possibility of a referendum and provide <coughs> residents with the mechanisms whereby that could go forward and we as a council would then defer any decision and advise Sedgemore accordingly. So, the councillors, could I have your views, please? It's not a question of, of amusement, um, uh, fellow attendees. It's a question that. Um, can we have your name, please? Some of us don't know you. Uh, well, my name's Colin Townsend. Thank you. 
Um, I've been in the village uh, approximately 16, 18 years. And, uh, um, we seek as parish councillors to do our best for the village. And the problems with the A38 have been, and some of you know who have been on the parish council before, have known that that junction is a difficult junction. At times it's easy to get across, at other times it's very hard, and at other times it is congested. I accept that. Uh, I accept all your reasons. But this was an opportunity for the village to do something <coughs> to its advantage and create safety for the users of that junction. Um, so it was with the best intentions that the Parish Council took the decision uh, as per this P4 application. So please don't think that we are acting against you. We are acting with the best intentions of everyone in the village and those that use the junction. It is wrong to castigate us because we think we are, we are acting against you. We are not. We took the decision as a parish council with the best intentions. So please will you accept that point. Um, I think the point that has now been made as regards um, a referendum uh, is probably um, the best course that we can take because clearly there is um, a, a mountain of objection uh, but we must also leave it to um, the other people within the village who may also wish to uh, vote. So I'm in a I need to be guided here, um, Mr. Chairman. Um, it is not for us to vote on this application tonight. We have already voted on it. <clears throat> what has happened is, is that the developer has responded responsibly to the error, not errors, to the circumstances within the initial application, and they have sought to answer those queries. What still is in abeyance, as you quite rightly said, or hopefully indicated, is the A38 junction, over which we have no control. It is with Somerset Highways. But there is such a large feeling, I need your guidance now, Mr Chairman, and I think we all do on the Parish Council. We can let... Um, this go forward, um, correct if I'm wrong, or perhaps Bob could help me here, um, as a council we can say, well, we'll let this proposal go forward because <coughs> the queries have been answered, the problems are still with the junction, which is not within our <coughs> We can let it go forward. Alternatively, the suggestion that's been made is that Instead of us taking a decision on this, we say, well, an application is now being made for um, um, a ballot, a referendum, in which case we must put the planning application to one side and allow the referendum to proceed before the planning application proceeds. Is that correct, Bob? I'm sorry to put you in the, in the seat again. That's fine. Um, and as you quite rightly really said, I mean, this, this, this came forward from a historic position where the junction layout that we've got at the moment, and those who have been in the village for a long time will know that about 20 odd years ago that junction layout was brought in as a temporary measure because it was improving the junction to, until they worked out what they could do to make a better junction. Since then, options came up which involved Sanders and roundabouts down the, further down the road. Um, it's been made very clear that there are not public funds for doing that junction until and unless it moves up the priority table and the only way it does that is by having personal injury accidents and fatalities and that's what moves that it's, it's a it's a sad thing to have to say but that there are a lot of junctions across the whole of the county that are not good and need need work in terms of where we are at the moment we've got a planning application obviously that was submitted uh, and this council made its recommendation on that which has gone in 
as, as <coughs> Colin quite rightly said, it is a perfectly normal situation that government encourages district council planning authorities to find ways of accommodating development, not obstructing it. And so in effect, what happens is you consult all the consultees, the statutory consultees will send in their comments as to things that they think may be problematic, and if a developer can deal with those and come up with ways of, of sorting those out, then that is done and the application can go forward. Now in this case there are a number of issues that have been raised and that's why it's come back out for public consultation because there's a whole range of issues that were raised with drainage and highways and the layout in the, the houses. Where obviously it, it, it's a, an interesting position for the Paris Council to be in is you have a situation where an application was supported, the applicant has then made changes to improve the application to deal with concerns that were raised by statutory consultees and then you're being asked to potentially take a different view on that, and that is something obviously members will have to, to make their decision on. In terms of referenda, they are problematic. I think I heard in the back of the room someone said you've got to write, ask the right question. If there is a referendum on this particular thing, what is the question? You could go to, do you like the planning application that's in front of you? It could be, do you think there's a highway safety issue at the 838 and you want to see it solved? Depending on what question you ask, you could get a very different answer. And I don't know that it's quite as simple as saying there's a referendum, yes or no, because there's a whole range of issues around this application. We know that there's been a recent accident down at the Cox and Goose within the last couple of weeks that we've been notified of where a car was written off, someone coming out of Brent Street and hitting someone on the 838. As we all know that there is an accident waiting to happen, but as you quite rightly said, none of us are traffic engineers. We don't have that knowledge to be able to say exactly how it works. We may well have our own suppositions as to whether we think it will congest or, or block. We've had objections from members of the village who have said that we should turn it down because it will clog up the junction and nothing will be able to get out. We've also had objections from people in the village saying that it will improve the junction so much that everyone will use Brent Street as a rat run to come out and use the new junction. Both can't be right, but we're not technically aware enough to be able to decide that that's the job of the County Council and that's why when the Parish Council made its recommendation last time we supported subject to County giving it the sign off before we would be prepared to because obviously they can work it out so as I say it, it, it sounds simple to turn around and say well let's wait and have a referendum I don't know what that question is I know there will be a number of suggestions of what that question should be but there is a danger that you engineer the answer by engineering the question. And unfortunately with planning, it's the job of the council not just to take into account the weight of public opinion, which is important, but it's the facts and the planning details that we need and should be making decisions on. And that's the decision ultimately that we'll have to make. Unlike all there's any one uh, question that was going to be asked in that, what is the benefit of the village, to the village? Uh, or is that a benefit to the village? Yes, what benefit is the actual um, application to the village? Um, and as to whether the referendum, if we had a referendum, which seems as though everybody wants, what if, what, who recognises the referendum? As I understand it, it's, it's, uh, we think I won't say to double check this, but we are, our belief is that Sedgeball would administer it and the results therefore would be submitted then to the planning department. There's a lot of things that I, that I can't offer any advice on because actually I've not actually come across the issue before. So yeah. you'll have to bear with me to, to come back to you on it. I don't want to give you the wrong advice. That's the point. It's the last thing I want to do. I want to give you the right advice. So I think it's important that I get clarity on the parish poll. Um, scenario, if you like, uh, before I put it before the council, or indeed members assembled, uh, as to how we pr proceed with it. Um, and I, I can only offer that, but of course, the only thing I can offer is that before us we have a, a, a revised planning application, which certainly the council have asked us to respond to, and I think we have to respond to that. <coughs> so what is the aftermath of that?